It's been a hot minute since Is It Phoenix was on top of the modern meta. This blue-red combo aggro deck used to play looting effects to dump arc-like phoenixes into the graveyard, then cast three or more cantrip effects to reanimate them and swing in for a bunch of hasty flying damage. Before Modern Horizons 2 and the Rise of Murktide region, these four mana phoenixes used to be a finisher for a tier 1 modern deck. Sadly, the combination of Faithless Looting's banning in 2019 and MH2's power creep made the phoenix deck obsolete, and the mythical birds would never truly rise from their ashes. Until today, that is. The historic format on MTG Arena has become the new home for the once popular modern deck. While more powerful is it combo decks like Creativity and Mrs. A and Mrs. A and Mizix's mastery are far more prevalent, Historic solves Phoenix's two biggest problems. Faithless looting is legal, and the meta is far less powerful than 2013 Modern. Today's Historic Is It deck plays mostly the same as before, but with a few powerful new additions. Ledger Shredder is a perfect addition to the deck because it cares about casting multiple spells per turn, and its connive trigger can help put Phoenixes from our hand into the graveyard. We have one of the best card draw spells in the entire game with expressive iteration, Ox of Agonis can escape from the graveyard to dump our hand and draw three new cards, and we have a backup win condition in Crackling Drakes with ten or more power in the late game. Today, I played 8 best of 1 matches to see if I could put this old modern deck to the test against the historic metagame. Let's see how it goes. Oh yeah, one little side note, so this video served as a test for my new PC's ability to record MTG Arena gameplay, so I was messing with some settings to improve the quality. Match 1 happened to be a victim to my testing, but I wanted to include this match because of an insane clutch finish I pulled off. This game was against Boros Creativity, and we were running pretty well before our opponent cast the Creativity. They found a Sarah's Emissary, which gave them and their creatures protection from creatures. We managed to find an Unholy Heat off an Expressive Iteration, then another one off a of Faithless Looting. Even after killing our Phoenix and attacking us for 7, we cast 2 Unholy Heat to kill the Sarah's Emissary, growing the Ledger Shredders thanks to Connive, and we swung in for Xaxes. In match 2, we're on the play with a good, if slow, opening hand, which we decided to keep. We played Spire Bluff Canal and passed, and our opponent played a Dark Slick Shores into a Ruined Crab, signaling that this was Blue Black Mill. We played a Tap Steam Vents and passed, holding up mana to play Spell Piercer Oft. Our opponent played a land, milling us for 3, and played a wall of lost thoughts, milling us for 4. Since our opponent was so kind to put a phoenix into our graveyard for us, I decided to keep my cantrips in the hope of being able to reanimate more than one phoenix in the same turn. My plan was rewarded when we draw a second phoenix, meaning we can play a land and then flashback faithless looting, putting the two birds into the graveyard. Even through a Demogorgon's clutches, we cast expressive iteration, consider, and off, reanimating three phoenixes and swinging for 9 damage. They milled us some more and we hit them for 9 again, dropping them down to 2 life. By this point, they couldn't answer our board and conceded, putting our record at 2-0 so far. Oh and by the way, if you enjoy this style of content and you want to see more of it, please consider tapping the like button and the subscribe button. Get it? Cause... consider? Yeah, I know every YouTuber these days parrots those lines, but truly they are the best way to let me know that you both enjoy the videos and you want them to reach more viewers like you. Anyways, back to the game. We're on the play, and this opening hand has nothing going on, so we decide to mulligan. Our next hand has some early interaction in DRC, Unholy Heat, and Consider, so we bottom a Phoenix and keep the rest. We start with a tap Stone Carved Coast, and our opponent plays Den of the Bugbear and passes. We play Hall of Storm Giants into DRC, holding up mana for our Consider. Our opponent goes Mountain into Eidolon of the Great Rebel, which lets me know that it's a mono red burn list. We cast Consider in response to avoid the Eidolon trigger, surveilling away a Faithless Looting from DRC, and surveilling another DRC, drawing into Sokinzan and letting Eidolon Resolve. On our next turn, we take the L and Unholy Heat the Eidolon, taking 2 damage in the process. We surveil with DRC, keeping a Spell Pierce on top to counter a future burn spell. We swing in for 1, play Silkenzan, and pass the turn. Our opponent plays a land, then Kumano faces Kakazan brings us to 17, and they stomp the DRC. We play Expressive Iteration, hitting 3 lands, gross. We play our Exiled Land and pass the turn. They play a Remanap Ruins into Bone Crusher Giant, getting the plus 1 counter from KFK. We draw and play land number 5 and flashback Faithless Looting, making Making sure to get Delirium online. We unholy heat the Bone Crusher, taking 2 damage from its triggered ability. Our opponent flips the etchings of Kimono, plays a Monastery Swiss Sphere, and stomps us in combat, dropping us to 9 life. We draw, then cast a Crackling Drake, getting another Phoenix. Our opponent pulls out a Chandra Torch of Defiance, which we have to frame one spell pierce. We top deck a Faithless Looting, pitching the two Phoenixes and attacking for 80. We play another Drake on our second main phase, presenting Lethal on board for next turn. Luckily for us, they spend their whole turn throwing two burn spells to take out our untapped Drake, which is music to my ears. They play another KRK and attack us down to 2 life. We draw a Consider, which means we can win the game if we draw an instant or sorcery on the Faithless Looting. Or at least that's what I thought would happen. I don't know why I go for this line, but I decide to play Ledger Shredder, then cast Consider to trigger Connive. And our opponent must realize that I can grow the Drake to 11 damage exactly, and decides to scoop it up. What a close matchup against the Burn deck. 
We're on the play again with a keepable 7 cards. We've gotten really lucky with starting first so far. We start with Sokinzan into DRC and our opponent plays Sacred Foundry tapped. We play Spire Buff Canal and attack for 1. They play another tapped Foundry and pass the turn. We play land number 3, attack, and awkwardly have to pass with nothing to do. Our opponent decides to pull a 180 by playing a Forest into Idyllic Tutor, grabbing 9 lives. This tips me off to the fact that they're playing the 9 lives Solemnity lock deck. For anyone who doesn't know, this deck works by using 9 lives to prevent combat damage in exchange for incarnation counters. Normally our opponent would die after getting the 9th counter, but Solemnity prevents 9 lives from gaining counters, making our opponent immune to damage. We can spell pierce one of their enchantments if they decide to tap out, or we can bounce a Solemnity with our Singleton Otawara. The deck really has to speed up if we want a chance at winning this game. We try digging for answers, but come up short, so we decide to attack and play a Ledger Shredder. On their turn, they cast the 9 lives and decide to pass. On our next expressive iteration, we come up short yet again. No surveil or connive triggers get us any closer, so we're gonna have to just swing and pass the turn. While I'm checking my graveyard for anything we could possibly use, they cast Solemnity and lock us out. Our only hope now is to bounce Solemnity with Otawara and put enough counters on 9 lives to sneak away a victory. Unfortunately, they cast Solemnity number 2, and with no way to answer the second one, we decide to scoop it up with a 3-1 record so far. Things don't really pick up for our next game either. We're on the draw and we have to mulligan down to 6. They start by playing planes into Alseed of Life's Bounty, and we play Spire Bluff Canal into DRC. My worst fears come true when they play a land into an Ajani's Pride Mate, meaning they're on mono white life gain. Since we're an aggro deck, we get stonewalled pretty hard if they can gain a lot of life, so we're gonna have to stop that from happening as much as we can. The Alseid gets in for 1 lifelink damage, growing the Pride Mate. We go land into Ledger Shredder, hoping to stop the Alseid from attacking next turn. But of course, our opponent goes land into Heliod in full swings. I block to kill the Alsade, but Pride Mate and Heliod both trigger, making Pride Mate a 5 5. We don't really have any answers to a 5 5 Pride Mate, and they happen to have the Nut Draw by playing a land into Linden and a Saracendon. Our opponent snowballed way too quickly for us to catch up, so we're gonna have to scoop the game. This time we're on the play with a pretty great 7, and things are looking a lot better this time around. The first few turns are pretty uneventful, with our opponent casting Voice of the Blessed on turn 2, forcing us to heat it up before it can grow. On turn 3, they cast a Righteous Valkyrie, making me think that they're on some sort of weird Orlov Angels brew. We get a Crackling Drake out on turn 4, and they have nothing to do on their turn. That's weird. On turn 5, I swing with Drake for 7, and they block, casting Eerie Interlude to keep the Angel alive. I channel my Otawara in response, bouncing it back to their hand to fizzle the Interlude. On their turn, all they can do is replay the Valkyrie meaning that Otawara has essentially become a time walk. This time they let us swing in for 7 damage, so we rush ahead by emptying our hand and then casting Ox of Agonis, which is now a 5 mana 4-2 that draws 3 cards on ETB. Yeah, this card's insanely broken. They play another Valkyrie, but by now our board has gotten pretty big and pretty wide. We have a great turn this turn, casting 2 EIs and an Opt, conniving away a Phoenix and reanimating 2 birds for a massive swing. They keep themselves safe with a Teferi's Protection and 2 open mana to fizzle my Spell Pierce. They cast a Shadow Rite Priest, finally confirming that we're up against Orzhov Clerics. On my next combat phase, they have another Teferi's Protection. Then on their turn, they cast Cleric of Life's Bond into Vito, Thorn of the Dusk Rose. This was an interesting game, but after clearing away some of their board and facing down a ton of flyers, they concede the match. We're on the draw with a slow but playable 7. We set up our DRC and our opponent opts on our end step. With two islands now on the battlefield, I'm assuming either mono blue control or some sort of tempo deck. We attack with the DRC, but our opponent flashes in a Merfolk Trickster to block it. We play Ledger Shredder post combat and our opponent keeps their mana up, notably missing a land drop. We play EI to get our third land and play a DRC, conniving away an Ox, but they counter the DRC with a Wizard's Retort. Luckily, our deck still plays fairly well against counter spells because Phoenixes only care about how many spells are cast, not resolved. We go into our grindy mid-range mode by setting up more ledger shredders and conniving away the late game action for more immediate answers. We also keep our opponent off of drawing with Curious Obsession thanks to Shredder's big butt. They tap out for Leyline of Anticipation, leaving us open to cast a Cackling Drake and set up a kill in the air. On our next turn, we cast 3 spells to reanimate a Phoenix, and I play it safe by only attacking for 12. They decide to Fading Hope my Drake, but I Spell Pierce in response. Instead of just paying the 2 mana, they decide to play their own Spell Pierce, giving me 2 free connive triggers from the Ledger Shredders. On their turn, the opponent completed their daily quest by casting a bunch of blue spells before giving us the GG's and scooping. Alright, this is it, the final climactic battle. Well, sorry to burst your bubble, but this was far from the epic confrontation you were hoping for. Our opponent was running Jeskai Proliferate, I think? I don't really know, it had energy counters and poison counters going on, it was real weird. I included this match because I want to show you our deck's resilience. When we got off to an early start with DRC and Ledger Shredder, they cast Supreme Verdict. We got two Phoenixes out of the graveyard, and then they cast Farewell. 
You'd think that this would absolutely wipe us out, but we were actually able to stabilize very quickly. By the end, our opponent cast a Gideon of the Trials and plus one on our Ledger Shredder, so we had to unholy heat the Gideon to kill it. We connived away another Phoenix and cast more looting effects, and our opponent saw the writing on the wall and just decided to scoop it up. Over the course of these 8 matches, the deck went 6 and 2, only losing to the Solemnity Lock and the Life Gain deck. I was incredibly impressed with our performance. On paper, we're supposed to lose to Burning Creativity, but we managed to swing the matches back in our favor. Historic Phoenix is far from the power level of the 2019 Modern Decks Turbo Mode using Mana Morphoses and Phyrexian Mana Spells, but this mid-range variant was even more fun to pilot. If you're interested in a primer on how to start building one of these decks, I'll leave a link for the deck list in the description below. Please don't forget to like and subscribe on your way out, and until the next one, take care.